Keith, are you, Keith, are you ready on your end? All right, we're getting ready to position the camera and test the audio. Coach, can you count to 10 for me? A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Sounds good. All right, we'll get rolling here with Coach Trailer. Uh, JJ, you're up first. Hey, Jeff, how did your uh, team respond today in practice after that tough loss? Just like I expected them to. It was one of our very best practices. And um, you know, I've said it before, you, you find out about your team when you go on the road with them for the first time. And you really find out about your team when you lose with them for the first time. And uh, you know, they handled it. Just like I expected them to. We're no different. We're the same team, four games in a row. We work hard. We, we practice hard. We play hard. And uh, we make mistakes. And so it doesn't, it doesn't change how I love our kids or how they love each other. And uh, we went back to work today. How did uh, Frank practice today? How did he look up? Uh, better than last week. Uh, we did it just like last week. You know, him and, him and Josh practiced last week. And, this week it was him and Lowell, and uh, got most of the reps, and he looked he looked better. Hey, Greg, you're up. Jeff, on the on the updated depth chart, we saw Lowell Narcisse listed ahead of Jordan Weeks in the quarterback rankings. There, what led to some separation for you to make that uh, make that distinction this week? Mm. There hadn't been much separation between uh, those two anyway, and uh, we just thought Lowell's performance in the game uh, warranted that. We also saw on there uh, Demetrius Allen listed as a possibility at left guard. I know he played some tackle a little bit this year and has kind of rotated in there. Uh, against UAB, it looked like he and Dom sort of split snaps at guard. Why did you want to manage that position that way? Um. We're just still trying to create depth, and uh, Meech is young. He's very athletic, and uh, he just continues to get better. It's nothing that Dom's done wrong. It's just more of a reward for Meech. And we talked yesterday about, about Rashad and his leadership not having him for the first half. Do you expect that, that Kalechi or whoever picks up those snaps brings that leadership component, or do you just look to other parts of the defense to fill that gap? Uh, we all, whenever anybody goes down, we all know we all each have to do a little bit more. Uh, but Kalechi is extremely intelligent, high character. And, uh, you know, he, he was injured for all of fall camp. So this is literally like his third week back. You know, he was cleared right before the Texas State game. And uh, so he's had about three weeks of practice, and he, he continues to get better every day. How about Savion Harris? Do you expect him to be back in the fold this week, or what's his status? We hope so. Uh, he's getting better every day as well. Uh, we hope he'll be. We hope he'll make the trip. I'm curious about uh, the dynamic of in-game play calling. We talked about it in the spring, but I don't think we've revisited it since then. Do you play a role in that within the game, or do the coordinators entirely handle that? How does that dynamic work for you on the sideline? Uh, no, I'm involved in every decision. But ultimately, the it goes through me. So every decision is made out there. It's a it's a reflection of me. That's from special teams to defense to offense. And uh, obviously, I'm going to listen to Coach Perry and Coach Nix and Coach Lonnie the most, but it, it all runs through me. So, do you typically, you know, hop in to change a play call if you think you see something, or do you offer up, hey, on this series, maybe we look to this, or like just how does it work within a game? Uh, all of the above. I mean, m most information is during the series. Uh, in, in between series, I apologize. Um, I, I try not to be knee jerk. And uh, once we talk about it, you know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, done during the week and it's scripted. And so you go into the game, it's already, we've already worked it all week. They're, they're, unless somebody's changing some stuff on us, which this always happens and in between conversations and they get with coordinators and, but you know, it's, it's not like I'm calling every defense and every situation and punt every, situation of offense, but in between series, I'm in communication with all three coordinators at all times. Hey, JJ, you're up. 
Jeff, uh, along those lines, how, how have things worked, I guess, from a um, working with each other standpoint with the with your coaching staff? I, I know yesterday you said you kind of you're treating these first four games like camp. How, how have things run between the coaching the coaching staff? Uh, we, you know, we've all had to learn each other a little bit. Uh, most of the guys I've worked with before, so there wasn't that learning curve. Uh, but, you know, two of my three coordinators I've not worked with before. So Coach Perry and I have had to learn each other, and Coach Nixon and I have had to learn each other. Uh, but they're unbelievable uh, men first, uh, and they're really good coaches as well. And they all the guys have done nothing but just been wonderful for me. Uh, I, I – I literally, I, I said from the beginning, uh, my, my heart is to always be an assistant coach. I don't, I don't mind. Uh, I know where the buck stops, but my heart's always with an assistant. And I, I want to recruit as hard as they do. Uh, I want to coach as hard as they do. Uh, and when they go home at night, I want them to, to know that uh, no one works harder than their, than their head coach does. And I, I want to serve them, and hopefully that will be reflective in, in them trying to serve me. Yesterday, you mentioned uh, you'd have more information on uh, Josh Atkins' injury. Did, do you have an update for us on that? Yeah, uh, we got good news. Uh, he is going to have to have surgery, but it looks like it'll just be four to six weeks uh, where we're afraid it might be a little bit longer than that. So uh, I know that doesn't sound like good news, but it, it is good news because he's not done for the year. Okay, Greg, you want to wrap this up for us? Yeah, sure, Jeff. The other thing this morning we learned that Lucas Dean is the Ray Guy National Punter of the Week. What did it mean for you or for your team to see somebody receive that kind of national recognition? It's always great, you know, for recruiting. Uh, our our Navy SEALs unit uh, takes great pride in Lucas. You know, our snapper Caleb Cantrell takes great pride in Lucas. Uh, our shield, you know, uh, Oscar and uh, Dom take great pride in protecting him. Those guys up front have worked their tails off in covering. And if you remember, that unit was the one that everybody was on after the Texas State game. Uh, and now they're one of our most celebrated units. So it's one of those things that doesn't kind of get talked about, but we have improved tremendously each week uh, in, in each area of our team, but especially on the Navy SEALs. Is, I haven't heard that before, Navy SEALs. Is that a, is that a nickname for that group up there? Yeah, all of our uh, special teams have a military uh, nickname because we're in the military city, USA. So we just uh, went with it uh, in honor of our military. Got it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you all. All right. God bless. Words up. Okay, we got uh, <laughs> Frank Harris. <laughs> We're going to reposition the camera. Can you count to 10 for me? One, two, three. Am I good? Yes, yeah, Frank, you're, we can hear you. All right, appreciate it. All right, we're good. Okay, uh, questions for Frank Harris? JJ? Are you on mute? JJ, you're on mute. <laughs> Hey, Frank, how's it going? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, not bad. Uh, coach says you look good today in practice. How are you feeling coming back from this injury? I feel amazing uh, just going back out there and playing with my guys. Uh, it's an unbelievable feeling, and um, I just, I'm, it's, it's just a blessing. Were you, were, were you, can you describe your emotions when you went down first and, and kind of just what was racing through your mind? Uh, of course, uh, I was thinking the worst. Um, so when I went in there and uh, did the stuff with the doc, uh, he didn't suspect it was anything uh, worse than what it was. And uh, come to find out, uh, what he said was correct. Uh, but I didn't want to think about it like that. I was automatically assuming the worst. So uh, I was very, very down. But uh, I had to come back out there uh, the second half and cheer my team on. So I had to put that aside. How tough was this last week for you going, going through, not knowing if you were in the play or not, and then you know obviously not being able with you, being able to go with your team this past week. Yeah, it was tough, um, but I got trust in Coach Trailer, um, Nick, uh, training staff, 
Um, and they're going to make the best call for me. Because if it's up to me, I'm playing every time. So uh, I got to give them the credit for that one. Uh, they made the best call for me. They got the best interest in, for me. So I just respect them for doing that for me. Hey, Greg, you're up. Frank, what was it like in practice last week? Were you kind of limited on drills and reps, or were you out entirely? How did it work? Uh, I was kind of limited uh, in the amount of stuff that I did. Um, but uh, like I said, Nick and them uh, were trying to get me better every day. So I just went out there and did what I could and uh, just made the most of the opportunity. How has this week been different? Is your practice routine more back to normal? Uh, a little bit. Me and Lowell are still uh, uh, splitting reps. Oh, man. I don't know if I'm playing. It's going to be a game time, game time decision, and uh, coach is going to make that decision again, so it's up to him. You ended up uh, not traveling this weekend, is that right, to UAV? Yes, sir. What was it like just kind of watching from here and not really being there with the guys as that game was going on? Uh, me and Coach Shredder had to talk about it. We've uh, we seen that eye on stuff, and, um, you know, we made that call. But uh, it was tough uh, being away. But uh, my guys are going to bounce back. I know they will, and they fought to the very end. And I get a full credit for that. And uh, they didn't flinch. Uh, they didn't budge. What were those conversations like through the week between, between you and Coach Trailer about the possibility of playing and whether you were ready or not? Uh, of course, I could tell him I was good. Uh, I tell him I was ready. Uh, but he seen me. And he basically told me that I was not ready. And he was not going to put me out there if I wasn't 100%. So like I said, I respect him for making that decision. Because uh, you know some people might, some coaches might put me out there and uh, just you know, not the best interest for me, and just let me go out there and uh, and I play 100%. But uh, he got the best interest for me, so I respect him for that, and uh, he let me play. Did he talk to you about you know like honesty and how to handle those conversations and to make sure that you're giving them the right ideas so that he can look out for you that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, of course he did, but uh, I, I told him, Coach. I mean, you're gonna have to make that call. I'm gonna tell you I'm good every time. Uh, so I, I mean. I'm always say I'm good no matter what the, the circumstances are. Uh, I basically told him that. Uh, he told me I can't even tell him that. I got to tell him the truth. Uh, so, like I said, he made that call last week. I told him I was good. Uh, he kind of looked at me, seen what I could do. Uh, I was kind of limping. And he was like, yeah, that's, you're, you're a no-go. So, uh, like I said, I respect him for that. Because if it was up to me, I'd have been playing last game. Are you able to still like watch the offensive film against UAB and learn some things from that, or is it tougher when you're not the guy that you're watching on that tape? No, you can always get better by watching film. So uh, I went in with the same mindset uh, on Sunday when we were watching film. I learned from everybody's mistakes, and I learned from the stuff that they did pretty good. And I'm just going to grow from there, and I just keep getting better every day. Obviously, this week with BYU would be a pretty uh, significant challenge if you end up playing in that game. What jumps out about their defense or the kind of tests that they'll present for you guys? Uh, they're pretty good. They sound up front. Uh, they like to drop a lot of uh, people in coverage. Um, they did. They are very disruptive, and they're not ranked number 15 for for no reason. So uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us. Uh, we got to go out there and execute, and uh, we can't beat ourselves up and just go play football. Is there a benefit to you guys for playing a team that is ranked that highly and has that much talent? How can that help you, not just like this week, but in future weeks to have that experience under your belt? Of course, it's a great opportunity to go show what we could do. Um, competing against somebody who's a, a very highly ranked opponent. Uh, they're very respected. Uh, just going out there and playing a game that we love against a, a, an opponent like that, uh, it's amazing for the university and, and for ourselves as well. So we just gotta go, gotta go out there and compete. Uh, just give it our all. And once again, we're on TV, so I mean, uh, it's, it's huge for the for the community, for San Antonio, and, and especially for our university to go out there and represent us. Just going back to the injury situation quickly, do you feel like you're moving around at full speed, or are you a little bit limited in terms of like sprinting and things like that, or just how are you feeling overall at the moment? <laughs> like I said, I'm always going to be good. So, uh, like I told Coach Hill, I'm good. Uh, like I said, it's his decision. He can make that decision uh, game time, but uh, at the end of the day, it's up to him. Uh, he got the best interest for me, so I'm just going to leave it at that. All right, thanks, Frank. We'll get uh, Lorenzo Dantzler in Appreciate there. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, Frank. Yes, sir. Thanks, Frank. Yes, sir. Right. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I need you to count to 10. 
Let him hear, man. So just the so I can check audio. So that's for you. Just count to just give us. All right. Thanks, Frank. Countdown. Yeah, just count to 10 real quick so we can make sure we hear you. One, two, three, okay. four, five. Sounds, that sounds good. All right. All right. Uh, All right take questions. Good. Take questions for uh, Lorenzo Dancer. Uh, JJ, you're up first. Hey, Zo, how's it going? It's going good. How you doing? Oh, not too bad. Thanks for joining us today. What uh, How did the team bounce back in practice today after that tough loss? Well, what was the mood among the guys? Uh, honestly, to me, it felt like a, a fall camp practice. Uh, I know that sounds weird because we're about five games in, but the temperament was uh, like fall camp, just guys competing, uh, uh, getting after it, and, uh, you know, being sound on technique and uh, listening to what our coaches are telling us right now, and uh, we're getting after it. How, how, did, how would you say you guys played as a defense this past week? Uh... Up front, I think we didn't play very well to uh, what we wanted to do, what we set out to do, and that was to stop the run because UAB, uh, they like to run the ball. And uh, some would say they one of the best offensive lines in uh, Conference USA. So we didn't do what we set out to do, which to, uh, was to hold them under a certain amount of yards. So that part, I didn't think we did well. I think if we would have did, if we would have reached our goal on that, we probably would have won the game. And uh, they probably wouldn't have had the touchdowns they had. But uh, as far as the turnovers, um, we had four, and our goal was to get uh, five or six. So uh, four turnovers is always good, you know, for a basic defense. But I don't think we're a basic defense. I think we could be one of the best in the country. But um, as far as that goes, I think we played uh, – not good enough, not, not, not to our, our standard, I would say. Do you feel like you guys are improving every week, though? I definitely feel like we're improving, you know, uh, from week to week. I definitely see the improvement, um, like the turnovers. We got four this week. We didn't have, like, uh, we didn't have that last week at Middle Tennessee. So I think we, we definitely improving. Uh, I think we're plus five in the turnover margin right now for the, country, uh, for the conference. I think we leave the conference in turnover margin right now. So that's 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 an improvement. Okay, Greg, you're up. Lorenzo, how you doing? I'm doing good. How did you feel about your play individually? You seemed to show up on the on the highlights a few times. What did you make of your game this weekend? Uh I was just going out there basically just uh doing what my coach told me to do that uh he coached me all week on uh, what I need what I need to do to have a good game and uh I went out there and executed the game plan. Do you feel like you've been getting better or more productive through the weeks? What kind of improvement do you see from yourself through these first couple of games? Uh, I feel like I'm improving. Um, I still have a lot to work on, uh, a lot of things I need to, to uh, get better at. But um, I feel like I've been improving uh, by just listening to what coaches, Coach Wright is telling me to do. And uh, I feel like I, if I just listen to the small details of what he's telling me to do, that I will improve. I'll see my game improve much more. What was the process for you of finding a role in this new defensive alignment this year? How did that go just from the start of fall camp? Uh, just telling, just just doing what the coaches tell uh, telling me to do. Uh, just trusting them and uh, going through the whole process of going from wheel linebacker back to five technique, back to four hour. Um, it's just been a whole uh, big process of adversity and uh, I faced uh, adversity in my life before. So this was nothing new. It just goes back to uh, doing what the coaches tell me to do. So I just been really uh, focused on um, my technique at four hour and uh, getting better at that. Did you have any kind of a say in that of where you ended up or what you thought fit you best or was it just kind of going wherever they put you? Uh, we had a talk before fall camp of what I wanted to do, and I uh, I told him I would be up to playing both. And uh, I started out at wheel linebacker, and uh, had a few weeks at that. Uh, did pretty good, but it wasn't enough to to get me a, a significant enough time of uh, playing time on the uh, field. So um, a couple guys went down. Uh, they were short at at the four out position, at the DN position. So. Um, sat down with Coach Wright and uh, went back to my roots at D-line. So 
I'm pretty comfortable at where I'm at right now because I played it last year before, so it's nothing new to me. Yeah, I was going to ask, is this kind of an easier transition than trying to fill a new role at linebacker, or, or how do you see the, the change from last year to this year? Uh, it's definitely easy for me because I've always played with my hand in the ground. Um, Will linebacker was a little bit more complicated with the coverages. Um, I felt like I could play it. It was just I was slow in the transition because guys was there before me, so I was kind of slow at that part and uh, just learning the uh, coverages of the defense. But for I, it's, it's, base, it's really basic to me. Um, I have uh, uh, limited assignments and uh, – it's just, it, it comes natural. Yeah, from my understanding, the role you're in now seems like less of a pass rush role that you were kind of in last year and more like controlling your gaps and stopping the run. Like, how would you describe it? Is that sort of accurate? Uh, yeah, it's stopping the run first, but I can definitely get out the passer no matter where you put me at on the D-line because uh, I'm a run stopper and a pass rusher in my mind. So anything they want me to do, I can do it. Is the technique or the approach a lot different compared to like being wider out on the edge last year? Uh, yeah, it's a lot different. Uh, you know, being out in a five technique and a uh, nine technique when the tight end on the ball, uh, it's a lot different. You basically in between two, um, the tackle and the guard, and you have to worry about uh, staying inside in the B gap and controlling the B gap, not letting any runs inside the B gap. But uh, um, five technique, then you just have one gap and C gap. You you just contain. You have to let no nobody outside of you. So, uh, if I had to choose one, I choose you know the the five technique. But I'm just doing what's best for the team right now. That's playing the four eye. So, I saw on your uh, Twitter that you're expecting to become a father around the time the season ends. First of all, yeah. congr- first of all, congratulations on that. But I'm yeah. wondering how has that impacted your mentality through the year. Uh, I think it's played a, a huge difference in my mentality because, um, uh, like every, every day, every time I'm out there on that field, I just think about, you know, giving my son the world when he gets here. And I want to, uh, I want to be playing in the NFL someday. So I'm, my mentality has changed and, um, I know I want to provide for my family and, uh, especially my son, I'm excited for him to get here. I'm just going, I'm going a hundred percent for him right now. Are you married right now? And how do you just sort of describe your plans, like personally, career, and going forward after the season? Uh, we're not we not married yet, but I, <laughs> I, I plan to take it there, though. I plan to take it there when, once I get my, uh, my financial right and graduate, my financial uh, uh, situation right, and I had a degree in hand, I plan to take it there. But as far as uh, my career, I'm trying to get a degree right now. Uh, I'll be graduating in December, so... I'm only taking one class right now, so I got to finish up that one class and I'll be graduated. What are you studying? Uh, multidisciplinary studies with a minor in kinesiology. But as far as my plan B, if I don't uh, get a shot at the NFL, I want to end up um, being a graduate assistant at UTSA or wherever uh, coaching leads me. I want to be a college football coach. Cool, cool. Good stuff, Lorenzo. Thanks. All right, Shay. I think so. We'll get Lucas Dean in there next. All right. So Oh, this way? Okay. Yeah. So do I just look at the camera? Yeah, or the screen, whatever. Okay. Whatever, whatever All right. I'm going to position the camera. Can you count the 10 for me? Sir, I need you to count to 10 for audio purposes. Do Lucas, I count to 10? Yeah, Lucas, that's for you. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right. Sounded good. All right, um, sounds good. Okay. Uh, we'll get started with questions for Lucas Dean. JJ, you're up first. Hey, Lucas, how's it going? Good, yourself? Oh, not too bad. Thanks for joining us today. I guess, what does it mean to be able to earn this uh, Player of the Week award that you, you got this week? Uh, yeah, it's an honor to get recognized, but it's also good for the other guys in our Naval Seals unit to know that what they're doing out there 
is contributing to the team and it's getting recognised nationally for it. But yeah, it, it's it's an honour to be named that. Coach Trailers always talks about the special teams being an important, you know, part of the triangle of toughness. Do you guys feel that? Definitely, yeah. Like he's put it, him and Coach Perry as well put a big emphasis on the importance of special team and how even our Navy SEAL unit, how we influence, help the defense out and then how the return game helps the offense out. So I definitely think the guys are bought into the fact that it's a part of our triangle of toughness. So the Navy SEAL unit, that's the that's the punting team? Am I that, understanding that correctly? Yeah, that's the punt team. Uh, Coach Trailer calls us that because we're the most trusted guys on the team and he, he wants guys out there that he can trust. Okay, Greg, you're up. Lucas, how you doing? Good, self. Good, good. Especially in the, the game Saturday against UAB, how valuable was your ability to help flip the field? What impact did you see that that had on the game? I think it, it definitely, like, our ability to flip the field definitely had an impact. Like, I think the one that our team downed at the one, they then were, their punter was then backed up, which then we basically almost scored from. So you definitely see the influence that it has of being able to flip the field gives the defense like 90 to 100 yards to work with, which is uh, Coach Perry actually shows a drive start chart. And I think it's like one in 30 chances of them to score if the ball's like down inside the 10. So definitely like the whole special teams unit sees the impact that flipping the field can have. You seem to be pretty comfortable with both like the rugby style punts sort of on the run and maybe rolling it in there and the more traditional punts that we've seen like in like in the NFL, for instance. Is there a, is there a certain style that you're more confident in or how do you uh, how do you rate yourself in those two ways? I'm pretty comfortable in both. I probably slightly prefer, prefer the traditional way. The rugby style comes a lot naturally, obviously, with my Aussie rules background and then training with Pro Kick Australia. But yeah, I feel I feel comfortable doing both, but I definitely prefer the more traditional ones. How do you decide which one to go with in a traditional situation? Is it like predetermined so the coverage team knows what to do, or how does that work? Yeah, Coach Perry calls on the on the sideline, but it'll uh, it's a lot of them situational. Uh, yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of it's just situational. How I'm feeling, say if there's like the conditions. So when we're at the dome, it doesn't really influence that much, but. If it, there's a gale force breeze coming into us, we might say go for a, a rugby style punt because I can control it a bit better. But yeah, it's, a lot of it's just situational. How was your off season? What did you do during the summer? Uh, I stayed in San Antonio. I, I didn't want to go back just in case like I couldn't get back here. So I just stayed. I actually uh, hunted a place as our kicker. His parents were kind enough to let me stay at their house. So me and him spent a lot of time together just constantly working he worked on his kicks I worked on my punts and they've got a little gym set up in their house so we we're lifting weights the whole time uh I just kept working my technique there are a few things that I needed to tweak to get more consistent so I just kept working on those things it was definitely tricky not having coach Perry there being really hands-on like just doing changing your technique over zoom is pretty difficult but I think yeah I think it worked out all right was it a tough decision for you of whether to try to go back home was that something you really missed out uh, no, not really. I was pretty keen to stay here. I just didn't want to risk going home and then not being able to come back for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I, I was fine staying here. How'd you keep in touch with your family? Just a lot of, uh, a lot of phone calls and, and, you know, texts or how did you manage to fill that gap of not being able to be there? Yeah, I just like FaceTime them once or twice a week. They usually call me before or after the game. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty introverted guy, so I, I don't mind just like keeping to myself. And I've been in, this is my third year away from home, so I'm kind, I'm kind of used to being away from home and so are my parents, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, JJ. Lucas, what's it been like trying to, you know, adapt to the, the different culture here in San Antonio versus what, I mean, where you were at before? Yeah, it was a bit weird at first. Uh, the thing that gets me the most trouble is probably my accent. Like I'll be going to somewhere to order food and they can't understand what I'm saying. So sometimes I need like a translator next to me to help trans translate stuff. But I think Texas as a whole is pretty similar to where I'm from. Like the people are really relaxed. Like, yeah, I, I really like Texas, yeah. How did you end up at UTSA originally? Uh, so I trained with an academy called Pro Kick Australia. It's run by Nathan Chapman and John Smith uh, in Melbourne, Australia. And then they've got a really good track record for uh, getting Aussie punters to come to colleges over here. 
So I trained with them for a year and UTSA contacted them about halfway through that year, like uh, 2018, because they were interested in getting an Aussie punter. So they sent my film over and the coaches were, must've been happy with it because they offered me then. And then I, I committed straight away and came on a visit end of that year with my parents and they loved it. So yeah, we definitely knew this was the spot to come. All right, appreciate it. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Lucas. We'll get Kalechi in there next. Thank Thanks. Check your audio. Can you get a, give us a 10 count real quick? I, I can't hear you. To check your audio, can you count to 10 for us real quick? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Sounds good. All right. We'll uh, open it up for questions for Kalechi Wachuku. Uh, JJ, you're up first. Hey, Kalechi, how's it going? What's up, JJ? Hey, um, what, what was it like today at practice? How did the team bounce back from that tough loss? What's the mood of the guys today? I mean, everybody was eager to get out there, ready to get back to work, um, ready to fix all the problems we had. And, and I mean, now we're all our focus is on BYU and, and how we can really handle those guys and, and shock the world. That's, that's our goal this week, to shock the world. How would you say you guys played defensively this past week? I mean, we played good, but our expectations are higher. And although they only scored 21 points, I mean, we, we expect shutouts. And whenever we don't get shutouts, we, there's a lot of things that we can do better. And we know we left a lot of plays out there that we should have made. What about yourself personally? Coach was saying you were kind of banged up and that you're now really starting to get back to yourself. How, how do you think you've played uh, this past week and the last few weeks? I'm um, just getting better every week, and that's been the focus because, I mean, I, w I missed all of camp, and I got back Texas State week, and, I mean, I was just getting my groove back, getting my conditioning up, and, you know, just trying to do whatever they needed from me, and I feel like now I can contribute more. Um, I feel great, and I'm just ready to work every day. Hey, Greg, you're up. Watch you. How you doing? I'm doing good. What's up, man? I'm wondering what, what stands out about BYU as you guys have started to look at them? What are the biggest challenges that they present you? Um, they're a well-coached, disciplined team. Um, they play good on special teams, play good physical defense, and they have a great quarterback. And, I mean, that's kind of the philosophy we want to live by, too. And uh, we know that they're going to come with it. They're not going to make very many mistakes. And, I mean, we just got to be sharp. But we're a great team, too, so I hope they're not overlooking us. Coach was telling us just about the amount of talent that they have and some of the guys he looks at as possible NFL players. What does it do for you as a team to go up against, you know, talented players like that and to be exposed to this kind of uh, team in this kind of environment as well? It's exciting. You get to see, you know, where you stack up and on, you know, guys that are, that are doing what you want to do and where we want to be eventually, and that's the NFL. So, I mean, you get to go out there and you show your stuff. And, I mean, if you can dominate them, then that's even better for us. There was a play Saturday. You were right around the ball, and there was a fumble. Was it you who ended up ripping it away? Or can you take me through what you saw on that play? Yes, sir. I stripped the ball, yes, sir. Can you take me through that play in general? Kind of what was your mindset going after the ball, and you know what you saw there? All right. So it was uh, just a simple bubble screen, and I was going down, and I initially missed the tackle, and then I just got up and I ran in there, just want to, you know. Make up for my make up for my missed tackle, and I just ripped at the ball, and and it was a fumble. What did it mean to you to have a play like that after, like you mentioned, kind of coming in late and just sort of trying to play catch up here and get involved and get back to the level you want to be at? Is I mean, it's big, big confidence booster. I mean, it put our offense in great field position, and you know, I just want to be able to make plays that will help the team, and you know, anything I could do to help the team, I'm willing to do. What was the mentality like for you when? Rashad got called for targeting and it's kind of now you're going to be leaned on a little bit more for the rest of the game and now the first half this week too what, what goes through your head I mean I was, I was ready for the opportunity I mean I don't agree with the call but I was ready for the opportunity you know Rashad is one of our leaders and 
I mean, even when he's not on the field, I mean, he's just a great guy. He's motivating us. He's still the heartbeat of the whole team. And, and I know that when I'm out there, I can always count on him, you know, to tell me things, you know, that I might not see or give me pointers or, you know, just anywhere he can help. And he helps with that. Do you feel like you have to sort of pick up some of that leadership role or does that come from the, from all around the defense or how do you view that when Rashad's not out there and you're in his, in his place? I mean, even though I'm, I'm not a, a, a starter, I still, you know, try and, and lead as, as much as I can. And, and the guys, I mean, they, they listen to me and they'll, they're, they're willing to, to listen to what I have to say. And I mean, nothing's really going to change with, with that aspect. Has your preparation changed at all this week, kind of knowing you're stepping into a larger role, at least for the first half, if not longer? Uh, no, sir. I go into every game. I mean, we prepare, you prepare to play. And I mean, even the past, Three, three weeks, I mean, I'm preparing as if I am the starter because you just never know. You're always one play away. So, I mean, I'll just do the same as I do every other week. How do you evaluate the secondary as a whole to this point in the year and, you know, particularly your guys' efforts to defend the deep passes? Um, it's definitely been a, a focus for this year because, I mean, last year we weren't as well as we could have been defending the deep ball. So this whole camp, um, the regular season so far, we've been really focused on uh, defending the D balls, you know, being able to play the ball in the air. And I mean, it's fi it's finally coming now. And you can see that the, um, all our hard work on the field. I mean, we gave up no D balls the whole game. And that's a big accomplishment for us. Thanks, Kalechi. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kalechi. We'll get Lowell in there next. <clears throat> Thanks, Kalechi. Yeah. See you guys. position the camera and check audio. Can you count to 10 for me? Count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, sounds good. All right, we'll take questions for Lowell Narcisse. Uh, JJ, you're up first. Hey, Lowell, how's it going? It's going great. How you doing? Not too bad. Thanks for joining us today. Tell me what it was like on the sidelines after that first play when Josh went down. What just kind of what was going on with the mood of the players, and you know, how do you think everybody reacted to that? Um, obviously, you never want something like that to happen to you know one of our leaders, especially a quarterback. Being um, the situation that Will's already and Frank was already out, and that's happened to Josh on the uh, first play. You know, it's just devastating. You know. I hope everything's, you know, it continues to go well for him. But, you know, we had to have a sharp memory, especially with the type of game it was in. You know, uh, we had to get the guys ready to go back and get – because we had a whole game left ahead of us. So, prayers up to Josh. What did they uh, tell you when they went to you in the second half to go in? Um, we, we was kind of in a uh, – I wouldn't say a slump, but, you know, we was kind of struggling offensively. And just trying to get a change and see if I could get some things going. It's kind of helpful us out. So, um, got in there, got a couple first downs, and, and kind of just kind of see where things would go. Both Coach and Frank said that uh, you guys are kind of splitting reps, you and Frank. Is is it kind of hard to prepare this week, that not knowing? I'm not really. You have to always prepare as if you're the starter. You know, just the last few weeks, you know, who, who would have known, you know, uh, we would be in this situation now. So, you know, Coach always tell us prepare as if we're the starter. So, um, I've been going in every week as if I'm the starter. So, just always be prepared to play. Hey, Greg. Lowell, well, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm curious, what did it mean to you just to have the opportunity to lead the whole offense? We talked about kind of taking that, taking on that, uh, the low zone package in that role, but now to have the opportunity to lead the whole offense for, for a quarter and a little bit extra there, what did that mean to you this week? Uh, it was a blessing um, just to kind of get the guys to rally around me and just kind of 
get a spark in one of the one of the conference game, or one of the better I mean, one of the better opponents in our conference. So um, I was blessed. I was ready to go. You know, um, obviously we didn't get the results we wanted. You know, but we got to be better from here on up. If Frank isn't able to play and you end up as the as the starter this week, do you think the offense would look pretty similar to that, or do you think that with a full week to practice, the game plan might be different with you behind center? Um, that's that's kind of what Coach Call, you know, how they the, how they plan the game plan is. I mean, it's kind of the things that I'm comfortable with, the things that we feel like we can attack them with. So um, that's a Coach Call. Has it been meaningful for you to rise up the depth chart the way you have to go from, you know, at first it was all four of you guys and then Frank got the nod and then Josh was next, but now you're in position to be that either top guy or number two guy. What does it mean to you to, to rise up like that through the through these first few weeks? You know, my mom always raised me to, you know, stay the course, you know, you never know when things can happen. Um, just like, you know, who, who would have thought we would have been in this situation again? Um, so, uh, like I say, you always got to prepare as if you're starting and you know, always stay ready. What's practice been like so far this week? How are, how are reps being split or what does it look like in a given session? Yeah, me and Frank are both practicing with the ones, just, just kind of easing him back into it. And um, it's going to be a game time decision, just kind of see how he's feeling. So, right now, both of us are kind of practicing with the ones and just kind of seeing how things go. Is your week and your preparation a lot different compared to when you're just kind of getting ready to run the low zone package in a game? Um, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm practicing a bit more, but as far as my preparation, everything's been the same. You know, I'm still watching film. I'm still preparing. I'm still breaking out things, you know, still talking to guys about what we're seeing uh, on and off the field. So, I mean. When you look back at the film of Saturday, how did you feel about how you played overall? Were you happy with what you brought? Um, obviously, you know, there's always room for improvement. Um, I wish, you know, I wouldn't have got a sack and we could have got a, had a chance to go tie the game up, you know, but, you know, we kind of put the lead up behind us and kind of focusing on BYU right now. I do want to ask you about in the, the first half, there was a, a goal line series where you came in there and they ended up getting the stop. What did you see on that or what would you have liked to have done differently to be able to punch it in? Is there anything that could have been different? Um, obviously, you know, it was a miscommunication on the first play. Uh, the fade ball that I threw to Zakari and um, I wish I would have had a second one back, just kind of kept it tighter to kind of force my way in the end zone. And so, I mean, there's a lot of things we wish we had back Saturday. You know, we, obviously we didn't play our best, so we can't keep dwelling on the things we wish we could have. You know, we had a perfect opportunity in front of us with a ranked team, you know, we're looking to go shock the world Saturday. Was it just a miscommunication between between you and Zakari on the throw, or was that not how the play was supposed to go in general? Um, it's miscommunication all around, you know. Um, the line was doing one thing, I was doing something else, and he was. So, I mean, it doesn't matter where it was, you know. If, if all the 11 guys are not on the same page, then, you know, it doesn't matter. Anything else for Lowell? All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Lowell. Appreciate it.